Alrighty, it's Wednesday. That means it's Q&A time here on OTRS Central. Thanks again to those of you that went to Twitter and tweeted your questions to add OTRS Central. Without any further ado, let's get going, shall we? Burn Notice 3216 asks, Why is Michael Cole the best announcer on Raw? And don't you think Jerry's time was up years ago? Um, Michael Cole, the best announcer on Raw. What, how, how, what's the best way I can put this? Oh, let's see how many people I can offend right off the jump. It's like, even if you win the Special Olympics, you're still a retard? I don't know. Um, <laughs> now, in, in all seriousness, it, it, the commentary is just bad. It's like JBL tries to be funny, but he flip-flops so much between his roles. Michael Cole is a face. Just really doesn't seem to work all that well. Um, even though you can see the chemistry between JBL and Michael Cole, it just doesn't come across very well. Jerry's time was up a long time ago. He needs to be utilized on that pre-show format, maybe to do some interviews, but as a commentator, he brings absolutely nothing to the table. All he does is suck John Cena's dick. He sits there and says lines that maybe would have been funny 10 years ago when he actually could deliver them properly and timely in the right way. Uh, yeah, their commentary is just terrible. So, you know, Michael Cole being the best announcer on Raw, what the hell is that saying, frankly? Uh, WWE 961, Schleg Daddy, what's your favorite pay-per-view theme and your favorite match promo? Um, I've never really been into the theme song, so I can't really tell you specifically I have one. Not a big music guy to begin with, so. Um, as far as famous favorite match promo, uh, one that always stood out to me, I don't know if it's my favorite, favorite, <clears throat> but I enjoyed it tremendously. If you remember the SmackDown match in 2002 between Hulk Hogan and Brock Lesnar, throughout the night they kept talking about Hogan and his legacy and showing these different videos. I thought that was incredible. It really got me hyped up for that match last in, on that night like a few other video packages ever had. Um, another set of really good match promos were the ones for Steiner and Triple H and 2003. Terrible matches, but the video packages beforehand were outstanding. A wrestling crisis. Do you think a younger wrestling fan can watch wrestling from the past and still love it despite not living it? Oh, absolutely. I don't see why you couldn't. You know, especially if you're not really enjoying the current product, going back and watching the older stuff, uh, you'll really love it. I mean, and let's face it, a lot of the people that come on the line and talk about how awesome the Attitude Era was, a lot of them either, frankly, didn't watch at that time, but they claim to. Uh, they are too young to have actually been able to watch it and really remember it. Or three, they weren't even alive at that time. So, yes, you can go back and watch the old older stuff and love it, despite not living in it. Uh, Mr. Tuxedo, is there anything from WWE's history that you loved at the time but you hate now? Um... You guys are coming up with some good questions. Uh, a lot of the Attitude Era, it worked in its time, but I don't think it works so well today. And going back and watching some of that stuff, some of it I enjoyed back then or I allowed to pass, that I would have picked apart and destroyed today. Avani Quest, most underrated stable. Um, Evolution, I don't think, even though a lot of people talk about it being one of the better factions, I don't think people talk about just how good it was in terms of the fact that it helped establish two main event stars, um, and it got more out of Flair, frankly, it got more out of Triple H. All four people were better off because of their involvement with that faction, and I think that's tremendous. Um, in terms of other underrated factions, maybe the Nation of Domination, maybe it would be another one. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll go with that. Rampager213, will you be watching NXT TakeOver this Thursday? I think it's Thursday. Uh, Probably, yeah. I stopped watching NXT because it was too much of the same crap. And you know, as football season came along, my interest level in wrestling goes <laughs> in general. And it really has went. <laughs> uh, but, yes, I will be checking out TakeOver this Thursday. Will I review it? I don't know. But I will be checking it out. Dexter C seventy three. Is it time to break up the Wyatt family? Yes. 
Let Rowan and Harper go off on their own. Let Bray Wyatt do his own thing. Yes, time to break up the Wyatt family. I do agree with that. Number one face. Will TNA ever be competition for WWE? TNA needs to worry about getting their own television deal yet. So hell fucking no, they're never going to be competition of the WWE. Uh, who will win the 2015 Royal Rumble? Uh, I would assume at this point is being positioned for Roman Reigns to do so. But you never know. We could get a surprise. Uh, Rick Styles, 1985. Do Romo, Cutler, or Rivers need to win a Super Bowl for Hall of Fame consideration, or will their stats alone help? <laughs> okay, let the... <laughs> Cutler, asshole that's in the not his ninth season in the league that has, correct me if I'm wrong, zero 30 touchdown seasons and one 4,000-yard season, one Pro Bowl appearance, and that was back at Denver in 2008. Fuck no, Cutler could win three Super Bowls and he's still not a goddamn Hall of Famer, period. As far as Romo, if he won a championship, maybe two, it definitely wouldn't hurt because some of the statistics are there. But there would be a certain stigma that he would have to overcome that only winning a championship or two in Dallas, which isn't going to happen, would help. And then Rivers might be able to get in without winning a Super Bowl, but I think what, taking his team to a Super Bowl and maybe winning one would cement his legacy and put him in the Hall of Fame. Uh, De Harris here. What are your thoughts on Sean O'Hare passing away? Very sad. I know my Ashley, she was a big fan of Sean O'Hare, so she was, you know, she was sad about it this morning. And that sucks. You know, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I, maybe I shouldn't assume, but I haven't been reading today. I'm assuming it's either some type of health issue um, or some type of suicide. And if that is the case, that is sad and tragic. And that's what makes it hard sometimes to be a wrestling fan is so many of these people that you watch, you know, end up passing away so young. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it in another video, but yeah, it sucks about Sean O'Hare. I thought he was an underutilized and misutilized talent uh, by the WWE. Real Ziggy 23, what's your favorite rock match in WWE history versus Hogan at WrestleMania 18? ALC 729, do you think it's possible that The Rock will face Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at Royal Rumble 2015? That match I do not think is possible. Because I don't think if they were going to do that match, they would waste it at the Royal Rumble. They would make that the marquee attraction for WrestleMania 31. While I don't think it is the most likely option at this point, do I believe some of the reports that it is something that Vince McMahon is considering and might still push for? Oh, absolutely. You know, Vince is still the guy. Vince still has final decision-making power. He loves Rock. He loves Brock. You don't think he'd want to have that be the main event of WrestleMania 31? Get the fuck out of here. It's still possible. Until the title match is officially announced for WrestleMania 31, it will be possible. It will be. Now, he brings up a confusion of with only the one title, how would you do it? Um, you know, that's an interesting question. Also, maybe you would do Rock and Brock, and it wouldn't be for the title, and that is also a possibility. Uh, JMAX0244, who's your favorite golden girl? <laughs> a fucking golden girl's question. Rose. Was it sad that I got a golden girl's question, or sad that I gave you a relatively quick golden girl's answer? Uh, was it... Or was it Blanche? Or was it Dorothy? Damn it, I don't know. The Golden Girls were all awesome. KCCO underscore UK. Would you classify John Cena among the top five promo cutters in the PG era? Yeah, probably. What What does that really say, though? You know, it's a big fish in a small pond in that category. Edsel4, will we ever see you make a reaction video of you watching Psycho City? <laughs> Pick his leg up. Sure, what the fuck, why not? Maybe I need to do that sooner rather than later. I've been putting that off for a long time. I, I think the best way to do it, though, would be is if I could do like split screen and I'd have to figure it out where you could watch the action on half of the screen and then you could watch my action simultaneously as it goes on. That would be the best way to do it because you could see it 
second by second, how I explode into uproarious laughter and just the random off-the-wall shit I'll say and celebrate the awesomeness that is Psycho Sid and his leg-breaking in 2001. <laughs> Johnny Ace. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Mad Stork eighty three asks, uh, "Do you think Ryback could have been the next face of the WWE?" <laughs> Possibility. It seemed like the machine at one point in time was really getting behind him. It seemed like Vince uh, was really in his corner. But that's like where you get a little concerned too. Is that? Vince being old and being kind of fidgety and senile, in my opinion, is that he gets very impatient, gets very cranky, and you know he's prone to change his mind just like that. And I think we've seen that with a lot of different characters, and Ryback is one example of that. Could he have been a top guy? Yes. Could he have potentially have been the face? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm not quite sure if they would have went all the way with there, there with him, but number two good guy? No question, which would make him a big deal. Um, and Handsome Hal Y ask, why does the WWE not put the E in their logo? This is part of the reason why people still call it WWF. Um, I would disagree with you about why people still call it WWF. For many years, people came up with it as it was called WWF. And a lot of that audience, as they got older weren't around for the name change of WWE. Furthermore, I think the WWE uh, did a terrible job of rebranding themselves in 2002 and even still to this day. You know, it is it is a bad thing. I don't care what anybody says. It's not good when you go by one name or one set of initials and people are still calling you by an entirely different set of initials. That's not good. That means your product lacks an identity. It lacks an upfront consciousness in the mainstream. And I think the WWE um, holds needs to be held accountable for themselves for the failure to get the word out and the failure uh, to effectively get that WWE name out there and establish their identity. Uh, putting the E in the logo isn't really going to help that much because a lot of people, frankly, would still call it WWF. And to a degree, that might be the way it always is with older fans because that's all they were ever grown up with or accustomed to. So there you go. Thanks again to all of you guys that submitted your questions for this q and I'll be back Friday for another Q&A. This will be the Facebook Friday edition, so you have to go to the Facebook page for OTRS Central and post your questions there. Uh, anyways, thanks again for you guys that submitted your questions. You guys asked some good ones this time. I'll see you Friday for that.